You're listening to Travel Tales with Virgil. Very welcome to part two of our interview with hotelier Brendan Dwyer. Brendan has worked for over 20 years in the hotel industry and he talks about the current lockdown situation in Spain and the differences between the attitude in Spain and in Ireland and the future of the hotel industry. And he also talks about great hotels in the world and goes into detail about his favourite places in Spain. So we've lots and lots more to talk about. Oh, Grant, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Do you know just, what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm just I'm muttering away to myself in my teaching <laughs> Spanish. Do you so, know what I mean? It's a local pastime ever since COVID kicked in. It's like have a little chat with yourself. You know, I always say that to my kids. It's my father said it to me before when we're getting a bit giddy and mad. Mm-hmm. And I use it with my kids. It's amazing how you repeat the same. But what's uh, the phrase? An- what? Anchorism. It's like, listen, will you sit down and have a chat with yourself in front of the mirror? You cop yourself on. <laughs> and I, I say to my kids the whole time, I say to them, they look at me with like bewildered Spanish faces going, what's he saying? You know what I mean? They're bilingual, but he's like, what's his psyche? We, they, do, they don't get me. It's That's funny true. when you marry, you know, I've cross-cultured, you know, marriages and relationships. Your kids actually don't get you, even though, you know what I mean? They've supposedly, you know, your, your blood running through them. They don't get it. They so when you like a, <laughs> when you say they away. don't when you say they don't get you, that's really interesting because are you saying you got like little Spanish kids <laughs> who are looking at this I Irish guy? Spanish kids, this Irish guy going right. We know he's he's our father. We got that. I actually kind of look like him, but I don't get him in the <laughs> sense of you know when I give an out to them or 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 some you know I say a sarcastic comment to them or I you know I'd be like. Uh, don't worry it's not all negative but it's the yeah. negative aspects of being a parent yeah, they don't get it because yeah. maria is totally different yeah you know what I mean? she's just a different way of, of of managing them and does maria see any characteristics in them then that are very irish that surprises her yeah i mean nora my daughter would she would see because she's strong pretty strong strong willed um and um very headstrong in many ways you know that's just you she, yeah that's, that's me <laughs> and that, that, that's me but it's probably my dad in in in, in many respects you know you yeah. know so it's funny anyway the mixture of, of, of between the, uh, the the two of us you've been closed um in the finca resort for like i suppose pretty much since march like how are you finding it now it's a long time isn't it yeah it's a long time and basically you know we we, we shut up shop on the 17th of march st patrick's day which is a bit bizarre um and uh, it was for me anyway um and we opened up for two months in the summer so the end of july august basically mid-september we closed again um and then we've had a few groups in between and we just got a confirmation of a few sub 21 you know uh, international sites are coming in March, um, which will be on a private basis. But yeah, the hotel as such is 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 has been closed, uh, and uh, very eerie to go there when you have a beautiful five star hotel and it's closed. And you know, um, and sad to see so many. You know, we've we've 120 uh, workers between the hotel and and the golf course and the restaurants. Uh, you know, and that's 120 families. You know, so listen, this whole COVID thing and, 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 and the rationale and, you know, everything else is, you know, we've we've all made sense of it now in many ways. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's the mental health aspect, which we haven't delved in because we're all kind of uh, I, 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 the, the word is not embarrassed, but the word is, is 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 you're shy to talk about it because everyone there's not one person, you know, friends or family that you'd have a conversation with. you know, has it affected you. Uh, and I think it has, you know, it, it's impossible not to have been affected when you're used to, you know, walking out that front door uh, and going about your business on a day to day basis. You know, and that could be A to Z, right? Looking after your kids or shopping or it could be work, it could be, you know, weekend away. And, you know, this stems into travel. You know, we can't get it into I still can't. I, I went to Alicante Airport twice to pick up people and it's the most eerie place. And that's the fourth biggest airport in Spain. And remember, Spain is probably the most visited country in Europe, or I think it's the second in the world with 60 plus million people. Um, and when you see the fourth busiest airport, which is the hub, right, in Valencia, um, uh, of huge leisure, you know, between charters and schedule flights, and it's dead. It, there's no one 
there's about you know two people outside uh, the main front door of that, or the, we'll say the four main front doors of that terminal building, and there's no one there. I mean, it's bizarre. The whole you know, and and we're not used to saying right, yeah, book a flight. Oh yeah, let's go to Lisbon for a weekend. Let's go to London for a weekend. Let's go home. Do you know what? I might nick a week, weekend home. Dad, are you around that weekend? Yeah, fine. I've just booked. It's two weekends out. It costs you what two hundred euros to fly home with with Ryanair, and that's last minute, right? Um, and so be it. Um, and I miss that. I miss the freedom. I, I miss the freedom of travel. Uh, and I miss, you know, making choices. Um, and we don't have any choices at the moment, unfortunately. Like um, Panty Bliss was on the radio last night. I was listening to him coming home in the car, pick up my son. And he was talking about how, you know, in Ireland, they say 70 percent of the population have saved during the lockdown. And he was going that 30 percent are people who work generally you know hospitality or travel and those industries and it's like they've forgotten about that like as if they're expendable you know yeah exactly and, and i think i i think um you know you can see it right and, and i i read the irish news and the journal you know the journal app, app um you know so i i flick through the irish news every day and also the ita the irish travel agents association which we're members of uh, because it gives me access to all the travel agents here on their newsletters, etc. So when we want to when we want to highlight something, I think I use that medium. Um, and between the UK and Ireland, and also then, and I'll just give the flip side of what's happening in Spain. Yeah. So UK and Ireland, I think, is the forgotten industry. I, I really I understand that as an island or islands that you need to protect your borders and priorities come priorities fine. But this is short term. We always knew this is going to be a two year deal. And it, and it is a two year deal. Basically, at the end of 21, we'll see some you know, flickerings in the industry, right? Uh, air travel, you know, the resurgence, et cetera. And that will stem into 22. Um, and everyone's looking to 22 and summer holidays. But it seems like you know, the hotels, air, um, you know, B&Bs, um, everything else that goes with it seems to be forgotten about. And the airline industry is just crumbling. Um, and, 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 and that's the... That's the scary part of it. You know, it is, it just seems to be that, you know, there's bailouts, right? 150 million, I think the Irish government gave Aer Lingus. Yeah, so what, but 150 million is like a, 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 a little drip in, 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 in a pond, right? Uh, you know, and I know we're connected, you know, we're linked in, obviously part of BA, British Airways now and Iberia, et cetera. But, you know, it, it's what, you know, right here are, are, are clamoring, but they're clamoring for a reason because it's, 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 it, 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 it's dying. You know, the, the airline industry is, is, is suffocating uh, because there's not any, you know, the volume that they need to actually breathe uh, within, within that, that, that sector. So uh, I, I really think that it's, there's, there's a very much uh, harsh um, and short term uh, strategy when it comes to, you know, the governments between the UK and Ireland uh, looking at the, at, at the hospitality sector. Um, and, and within Spain on the flip side is, uh, finally, some sort of relief is being given to the hospitality sector. In, in other words, on, on uh, I think they're looking at measures of reducing VAT. Um, they, they're also giving an injection of capital, would say, from local governments into into the hospitality sector uh, and help. And 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 it's a bit of sort of you know listening to the the cries of help for the last year. Um, because, you know, uh, Spain is so dominant in, in the tourism sector uh, within Europe, but so reliant on it also, you know, it can be classed as a primary, um, you know, uh, industry. Um, but, but, but the restrictions here are being lifted in the last few days throughout okay. Spain. There are certain restrictions. Yeah, the bars and restaurants are allowed to open up again. But, you know, you're not, we'll say as a family, you're only allowed to sit with two non-members of the family around the table, only tables of maximum six. Uh, the curfew is still from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, in Madrid, they've lifted that to 11 p.m. to coincide with the opening of the bars and the restaurants. So, so there's a slight relief now uh, in the country. Um, but there's always like strong optimism because tourism is part and parcel of, of, of everything that Spain has to offer. And everything like sort of revolves around tourism. Um, you know, within 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 the the hospitality sector, uh, in, in general. Like in Ireland, there was an article. Polo Keneal had an article in the Irish Independent last week saying that around tourism, it, the, the language is a little bit toxic at the moment. That it's nearly you can't talk about travel or tourism. But 
he said like places like Spain where they talk about lockdown at the moment, but they're optimistic about the future where Ireland is lacking that a little bit. Have you noticed that like in Spain? Yeah, I've noticed that. I actually saw that article. Um, but again, all that is is being, being driven by the government and has been the Irish government and has been from day one. You know, everything is, 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 is you know, statistics and mortality rates. And I think it's very sad that we've classed mortality rates as, as a stat. So, you know, that's created a bit of a psychosis in, in many sense, right, in, 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 in the Irish, um, you know, for the Irish consumer, uh, because being driven by the government. So even that action alone has, has sort of made the, the whole tourism sector and, 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 and the, the aspiration and the, the dream and, 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 and the positive um, uh, connotations to tourism and international travel, that's killed it. Because people now are afraid, that's, but that's scaremongering by the Irish government. Mm-hmm. And again, this goes back to my earlier comment, Fergal, it's all, we're, we're, we're being way too short term here. I mean, we have to think of the medium term. I know the short term priorities. We took those last year. We continue to take them. The Irish, you know, you've gone into lockdown since since after Christmas and, you know, and and, and, and probably, you know, being lifted, what, early March. So, so or, or generally being lifted from level five down to level four to level three, et cetera. But again, all this has has, has been turned on, on 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 its head towards the tourism sector and to to travel. Why can't you think of you know like the Spanish do? Look towards the summer. I mean, all this is you know this comes down to simple uh, the simple economics of COVID now because the contagious rate is is lowering. Uh, the more there's more vaccinations, there's planned vaccinations, and 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 they'll start becoming a lot more uh, in volume. From, from Easter time onwards. So basically by, by June, July, we should see a controlled effect and the, la- and, and, and the ending of uh, uh, measures of this COVID, which will probably last till the end of the year, right? But, but why shouldn't Irish people be allowed to travel from July, August onwards? Why shouldn't you begin, be, you know, you've been locked down practically for a year, three months. I mean, it's not positive for the country. It's not positive for, for your, men, you know, as we talk about mental health, it's not positive for, for the economy. What are I mean, they saying in Spain? Be, what are they saying in Spain? In Spain, in Spain is like we're, we're looking towards the summer. Basically, June, July, we're, we're looking to open up borders again uh, and, 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 and accept, you know, international tourism into the country because we need it. As I remember, the Spanish economy needs it. We can't survive unless we do, we do it, number one. Number two is we see it deemed enough, safe enough to do it because all the measures are in place uh, from, from the airline to the airport to the hotel to, to restaurants. You know, everyone wears masks. It's obligatory to wear a mask when you walk outside your abode. Um, so, so you know, the, the Spanish government see it as safe enough for that to happen. But see, the sort of time frame is July, August. Now, the other aspect is we won't be curtailed unless we're curtailed when we arrive to another country that we'd be allowed to go international travel. So we'd be able to go to London, we'd go to Ireland. And, but again, that depends on, on the receiving country. But Spain, as, as an inward basis is opening up for basically from July, August, I think we'll, 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 we'll definitely be in mode to, to receive clients again and, and consumer, you know, from, from all over Europe. So when was the last time you were in Ireland? Was it over a year yeah, ago? Yeah, well, it was it? actually, it, it was a year ago. Yeah, it was uh, the end of January. I did a weekend at the holiday show uh, in the RDS. Uh, we had a stand there. And not that it's Dublin's massive market for us in a Finca resort, but you'd always pick up one or two golf groups, right? Of 15, 20 guys. And, you know, there's three or four tour operators in, in Ireland that, that I would know for many years. And I always had a strong affiliation with Ireland anyway, being, you know, in my roles uh, on a single property or multi properties or in a corporate role, I'd always do things in Ireland because it's Ireland. And it's, it yeah. was, it was an excuse to go home. It's an excuse to do an event yeah. at the Four Seasons or now the Intercontinental Hotel, or it was an excuse to do, you know, invite 20 of Irish best travel agents in, 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 a, in a good restaurant, the Dublin city center, and then have a good drink afterwards. So yeah. anyway, yeah. So I went back for a long weekend, brilliant weekend in Dublin, worked for the Friday and Saturday, didn't make it into Sunday, sent my director of sales in uh, and a fantastic night, a uh, great city, very vibrant, you know, uh, I went back to Spain for a week and then went to the Maldives for a week. So it was like, but that was me. I was never phased by travel or different environments, but not being home in Ireland for a week or sorry, for a year, um, 
is be, is very weird. And first of all, I haven't seen my dad. Um, but but not to actually come in off that Ryanair flight and say hello to the to the to the to the, to the guards, you know, looking at know. your passport and customs is the like smile. and then yeah, I normally fly into Kerry Airport because my dad's in Killarney for what eight nine years now. Um, so. You know, I miss Ireland a lot because for me it was always a good, great to go home and see people and great grounding, you know. And I miss uh, miss the country, miss the people, and miss the food and miss the crack and miss sitting at a bar having a pint, being honest. I mean, no one talks about that in a way. You know, we, we all the talk is about, in Ireland, all the talk is about not being able to go abroad. But I think sometimes people forget about expats that aren't able to come back to Ireland, you know? Yeah, and I think it was, you know, it was brought to a head uh, at Christmas time, you know, and people would say, well, it was right or wrong, you know, to open the country, to close the country, you know, forget about Christmas, but Christmas is Christmas, New Year's, New Year's, we all have resolutions, we all have aspirations and hopes for, for a new year. Um, but yeah, all the expats who want to come home and can't come home, you know, um, and, and let's say millions, right? For, we're not saying thousands, we're saying millions because when we stem into the US, um, and, you know, everyone has a link or everyone has the aspiration to come home because home is, you know, and people sort of mesmerize and talk about the Emerald Island thing. And But it is, Ireland has something special. It's wonderful scenery, uh, great people, fantastic bars, restaurants, service, you know, and it's just a friendly smile, which goes a long way. Uh, and I miss it, to be honest with you. And a week at home in Ireland is, you know, is special and always has been for the last 24 years since I've been here in Spain, you know, or wherever I've lived around the world, um, I've always made it home. But going back to the crisis, um, yeah, we got through that. So we've been hit everywhere. You know, it's been a massive challenge um, where we've had to just, you know, on March 14th, uh, Spain was launched into a national emergency. Um, and over that weekend, um, you know, I was ringing the owners as general manager of the resort, um, saying we got to close, and they were in shell shock. You know, and a lot of a lot of people, I think, were in the shell shock. But you know, I wasn't because I've again, I've lived through a few uh, interesting moments through my high career. So you know, I've I've sort of gone through the mill of of having crisis moments and crisis plans and you know, uh, and, and critical path uh, and, and and what are we supposed to do at a certain moment? So, um, you know, I had my crisis meeting on Friday afternoon. On Saturday, I had another crisis meeting in the hotel with my executive committee. Uh, and then Saturday afternoon, I was calling the, the owner saying, we got to close. And he was in shell shock. He was like, well, I'm not going to close unless I'm told to close. And I said, no, you have to close. You have to close because we are, on, it's like an open wound here uh, where, you know, we have, we were on 82% occupancy for the month of March. It was just, you know, would, 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 it was or probably our best, would probably be our best month in, in golf segments throughout the whole year. Uh, and I had um, 115 uh, rooms occupied and I had to, you know, look for a plan B for these 150 rooms. So immediately we just went into crisis mode uh, and said, right, we'll give you until Tuesday evening to to find, you know, uh, an alternative way home, whether it's the UK or up to Norway or Sweden or Germany or Iceland. And, and, and we helped everyone through. We were just like their personal concierge department uh, to, to, to find a way home, you know, and free transfers to the airport. And that's important because it's important how and, and not every hotel this and I don't know what was you know I'm sure you got some feedback right of some hotels in Ireland how they managed you know in closing shop and some did it very quickly and abruptly we didn't because we know there's light there's always a life after right and it's not a Jesus moment and rising after three days but we know that there's life after you know this COVID-19. You're talking about looking after customers there and I remember talking to you actually around that time in March and you actually had one of the people. One of the people you're looking after was a was a soccer team, wasn't it? From Wuhan, of From all Wuhan. places. Yeah, exactly. Quite bizarre. Um, and uh, it was actually Rafa Benitez, uh, the manager. Um, it was his team, and Rafa came uh, with Valencia many many years ago to La Finca, and also then with Newcastle twice. So he knew the product, and I met him actually in at the end of uh, eighteen, and I also met him at nineteen. So. It was no surprise that he chose or so having the Chinese, you know, the the probably number one team and from Wuhan, um, you know, was 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 conversations behind the scenes. But we were saying, 
will we take it? And and I'm thinking, right, six weeks of business. This is great. You know, this will bring me into mid mid March. Um, so so basically, it was the all of all of February, sixty rooms, all of February and mid March. And I decided to take it because we were given; they were tested on a daily basis, um, and we were given assurances by you know um, Chinese doctors and then Spanish doctors who were traveling with Benita as part of Benita's team. So I actually had a conversation with Benitez, and he said, "You know, great to see you again, Brendan. Yeah, yeah, good, good." Um, I said, "How's everything going?" He says, "Well." Here's the deal for us. He said, I'm actually happy to be back in Spain, happy to be back in Valencia. I'm happy to avoid now what's going on in, in China. He said, you've no idea. The media don't know how strict and the controls are being put into effect that basically Wuhan has become a prison. So here, here we have is, you know, uh, 50 50, 50 something Spanish, uh, sorry, Chinese nationals uh, with, with, with a Spanish backroom team and a few Chinese doctors. Uh, and we've had them six weeks in the hotel. And basically, you, you, you don't realize they're there because it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's just a routine managing football teams, you know. Um, they have their breakfast in a separate area. They go off training. They come back. They have their lunch. They go again, train in the afternoon, and then they're back. It was quite bizarre having them last year, you know, uh, at, the, at the height of the at the uh, the pandemic. It was bizarre. And, I've, and there was a zero communication. So I said to my marketing manager, communications manager, and the marketing director, I said, zero. This is not going out. We're not talking about it. Even, when, you know, pre and post. They, they they never they never were in that hotel because you can imagine the knock on effect and they actually left a week before a national emergency was declared in 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 Spain so I mean timings wise great for me business you know that kept me you know with very high occupancy in the month of February and until March but you know PR nightmare right um, that you're saying yeah um, you know from from the origin of of the actual pandemic uh, you know I have I have their main football team in my hotel I mean Christ you couldn't you couldn't write a book about that you know it's just I bizarre know. you know again there's light at the end of the tunnel hopefully I mean listen there's no crystal ball in this but uh, I think we definitely do we need a digital passport to begin and I think from then onwards, it'll be a slow recovery. I think 21 will be, you know, a sluggish year, but at least it'll be manageable compared to, Fergal, compared to like other crises, we'll get through it. You know, and I think 22 will see an acceleration because everyone, everyone I talk to, even on a professional and a business basis, you know, um, everyone, everyone wants to travel. Everyone wants to get away. Everyone's thinking, you know, I don't care. I want to go to that X spot where I always wanted to go. Uh, and I think, and, and I think, initially we'll do short, short haul. I think we'll we'll do a trip. You know, um, for me, the trip would be to back to Ireland. Um, and my dad's, you know, based in Killarney, so you know, I love Killarney. So, um, and um, you know, spend spend a few days in Killarney in the high street and have your your pint at midday. No one, no one, no one even bothers to twitch when you have a pint midday and have a seafood chowder uh, and enjoy is this the, the longest you've been out of Ireland, is it? Absolutely. I mean, for you know, I left in 1998 uh, and I'd always go home two or three times a year. And work wise, I'd always go to Dublin twice a year, um, you know, and try because I'd always have good relationship with, 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 you know, B2B clients in Dublin. I'd be known um over the years and different roles that I've had and what where I've worked but I've always kept in contact with Dublin uh business wise and then down the country then yeah would be Ennis or Killarney you know um and keep in contact but yeah I, I mean it's bizarre it's really really did you find that tough I, I found it tough um and especially not going home and seeing you know my dad and um and uh, friends alike you know so so yeah, I found it very tough, to be honest with you, you know, and I love going home. For me, it's grounding, always has been, even during my heyday of nonstop travel. Um, you know, it was always nice to go home. Brendan, how are you doing? How has the pandemic affected you and your company? I'm managing it, but, you know, the subconscious level of, of the pandemic is, 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 has affected people. You know, it's affected you know, our social interaction. So it's like, no, 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 we'll catch up by Zoom or, you know, and, and, yeah. and on a social basis, but also on, an, on a business basis now, which is, you know, we, 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 we're seeing the effect of, but we'll see it over the next two or three or four years um, on on meetings. A lot, of, a lot of, you know, just flipping over on the hotel side of things. 
I think the biggest uh, segment that will 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 of the the hotel industry will be the meetings and incentive corporate events. That that will be massively hit, and I think that will be the slowest to recover because I think the lifestyle, you know, whether it's it's sports or general travel, um, you know, city center resort, etc. I think that will pick up quite quickly, you know, from from the end of 21, we'll say from September onwards, or even the summer. But I think some people will be reluctant to travel in the summer as well. It all depends how it's facilitated, right, uh, from an airline perspective and what controls are put in effect. But, you know, September onwards, I think we'll see a big pickup on the leisure, um, you know, um, cultural side of, of, of business picking up again. Uh, but I think meetings and incentive won't begin. You won't see it begin to to pick up, I think, from 22 onwards, you know. Well, will business travel recover? It will, but it'll be quite slow. Do you think for your business, is it much harder trying to build relationships over Zoom? Than um, or can it be done? It can be done on a B2B basis, right? So you can talk to tour operators. I can talk to agents. I, you know, easily done, yeah, by Zoom, talking to an agency. But how are you going to convince, apart from digital media, that clients to you know, to make their way. So again, before it was like a mixture of, well, you know, let's entice the client over or even part and parcel of the business for just to give you an insight, you know, how we used to confirm business on a group's businesses. Yeah, fine. Here's the quote. And then we entice the, the B2B client over to your resort. And once you have over your resort, then it's game on, right? Then you're showing them your product, uh, you're whining, dining, you're doing the wowzers, you're doing showing, you know, selling, you know, and pushing all the buttons uh, and, and uh, for your unique selling points, right, on your resort. And normally it works. That's why you're in the mix of things, right? And your personality comes through. But as you said, rightly, a good question. How is that going to be transcended on a digital visit? Difficult, difficult. So we're taking a big sort of piece out of the jigsaw, especially for the meetings and incentive um, business, which on a resort, it's 10, 15%, right? It's not a big player. But but again, there's a massive onus on, on digital marketing now. And I think there's going to be a massive push from summer onwards where, you know, we finally get over this, this hurdle of, yeah, we've all been, you know, we've had the vaccine, we're supposedly immunized. Uh, and I think, you know, and I saw in a lot of, it's beginning, I saw in the ITA, the Irish Travel Agents Association, they have, you know, we're members in La Finca Resort of that, uh, and they have their own digital newsletter. But I just saw pop up this morning that, that will we have a digital passport now because we've been, you know, we've had the vaccine. I think it's the only way to go, saying, you know, Fergal O'Keefe has, has been vaccinated um, and, you know, you've been vaccinated. So what would be you've been immunized? Um, and why not? You know, why can't you travel now? Why do you have to go into confinement? Why can't you have a free flow? of where you want to go and how you want to travel, you know, and when, et cetera. So, yeah, interesting stuff. I mean, it's the biggest, this is the biggest challenge in the travel industry ever. When were you in Madrid? Did you work in Madrid? I did. I I, I was in Madrid uh, in, 2000, in September 2004 uh, until June 2005. And I was there to open up an intercontinental hotel in southern Spain. But obviously all the business was out of Madrid. Um, but just as a matter of interest, having worked you know, on the coast versus Madrid. Is there a difference? Oh, absolutely. Work? Similar as like, as I talked about London before as well on the corporate side. Madrid is very formal. It's generally, um, as they say in Spanish, señorial, which means sort of um, middle to middle upper class. It's very businesslike. Um, it's, it's um, you know, they, they everyone dresses up quite well. It's, it's, it's a good, quite a... It, good quality of life and, and, and well-being in, in Madrid in general. Madrid, I would recommend to anyone. I mean, it's one of those cities where it's nonstop. You could be in Madrid and during the day visit, you know, either museums or parks um, and or, or shopping uh, or food experiences, you know, the, on a gastronomy basis. It's amazing, the tapas and the variety you have, right, of good top-end Mediterranean cuisine. Um and some edgy stuff as well and novel cuisine and and and, and some good. You know, Can I just stuff. you've just reminded me of a story where I was in Madrid with Emer and my aunt Auntie Anne right. and um, 
I they wanted to go to bed early, so I said I'd pop out for one nightcap. As you and do. I was, I, as I do. And I was walk. I was walking past this hotel. It was the goalie, the Real Madrid goalie. It's in a little square white hotel, and it, it he had just opened this hotel. It was the opening night of this hotel. Right, uh, Casillas, star, no Casillas, yeah. Iskur Casillas, yeah. So I literally was walking past it, and and there was like a little lift, a separate area with a lift. Right. And people and like red carpet and cameras and people were going in and out. So I just strolled up. No one stopped me. So I just went into the lift, was brought upstairs and it was the opening night. And upstairs, it's all um, rooftop villas, individual right. little rooftop okay. rooms, suites yeah. um, with, a, with a pool. With a party, <laughs> and I was in, you and just it was the in. Night. You just fitted in perfectly, in. absolutely. And all the rooms, all the rooms were open, and there was parties going on in all the rooms. That's fantastic. And I just had to be strolling. Just that's the thing about the Irish, you know. You, if you just, if you just, I always say, if you look like you're supposed to be going somewhere, generally you can get in anywhere. Absolutely, absolutely, and and you know what? It, it's great hotels in Madrid, um, mm. but but great nightlife. I mean, Madrid, they have the Latin Quarter. Um, where you could be out in Madrid, and why I'm saying I'll tell you why is because you'd be there till four or five in the morning, no problem in Madrid, right? Um, you know, clubs and uh, late bars, everything and anything, and different, you know, jazz bars, the salsa to, to, you know, to, to, you know, sort of deep house music, whatever, right? You choose whatever, whatever, whatever you're in the mood for. Um, and great food and drink, right? So, and a great atmosphere, relatively safe. I always found, found Madrid safe. In difference to that is is Barcelona. Barcelona from twelve o'clock at night goes very very quiet, uh, and a lot of things close down. And a lot of people will have said, "Oh yeah, it's so contemporary and it's cool and the Gaudi buildings and yeah, during the day, great." And but I don't find actually again, and maybe I'm being biased now, but I don't find the whole Catalan scene and the whole Barcelona scene that friendly and welcoming. I think they've been spoiled for many years since the Olympics. Uh, it's not safe. I've, I've had Hyatt, you know, when I was in charge of global sales, I used to organize one of those big trade shows going on there and we'd have 40 hotels come into town. There was not one time we didn't have an episode of someone being mugged or their bag being stolen. I mean, or their passport being stolen, their watch being stolen or something, all of a something happened, you know? So I've, you know, and I've been out in Barcelona back and forth. I've worked for an owning group and they were based there. And I never really liked it, to be honest with you. Yeah, food-wise, yeah, great. Some great restaurants and, 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 and themes. But again, they lose it in, 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 in their mannerisms. And, and, and I always would recommend anyone to go to Madrid over. Now, if we talk about Spanish cities, and I've traveled quite a bit over Spain, Seville is just 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 out of this world, right? From even a cultural and, and gastronomic basis, but even the friendliness of, of the people and the general environment in Seville is, is just amazing. Um, uh, Cordoba, also an amazing place, and you wouldn't find that many tourists in Cordoba, so it's quite cool. And then Granada is, is you know, skiing during the winter and then during the summer, or sorry, in the springtime uh, or autumn period, you know, Granada City with the Alhambra and also then, you know, so many... So what about where restaurants. you are? Where, where you live now? Yeah, I'm about, basically. Yeah, so where would you for, recommend? I'd recommend Murcia City. I mean, Cartagena is a small. It's like Cork. It's about two hundred thousand people. It's a small city center. I mean, great depth in culture. Uh, you know, they, with the the Carthaginians and and the Romans when when they fought, um, uh, and and it's a strategic port. Uh, and we have uh, one of the one of the, probably one of the best uh, preserved amphitheaters, Roman amphitheaters here in in in. In, in Catherine also. Um, so very strong influence of, of, of Roman culture and, and Roman runes, which, you know, um, you'd have glass floors, you know, so you could, you know, a lot of shops have, have glass floors that they're still, you know, built on. Uh, great, great, gas, you know, tapas restaurants, bars, very safe here in Catherine. But as a bit more light life and a mixture of that, plus more, it uh, would be Murcia City. Great city, very safe. Um, 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 great central cathedral around that. Then you have all like it's called Plaza Flores, which is like all tapas bars and restaurants around that that pawn off it. Uh, great shopping, great value for money. Uh, yeah, Murcia is great, but I'm talking about 
you know, if you flew into, you know, into into Spain and say, right, where would I go? I would recommend fly into Madrid and then get the fast train. It's called the AVE, AVE, uh, AVE fast train. And you'd be down in Seville in two hours and then stay in Seville for a few nights, then come back up to Madrid and fly out. I mean, that's a great weekend or long weekend. Uh, and then in southern Spain, you know, you have Seville, which which is amazing. But then going on to city breaks, which we did recently last year is, um, or say two years ago now before um, uh, the pandemic, uh, we, we did Lisbon and uh, Porto in Portugal. And I would recommend that as new places to go, because yeah. when you say, where, where would you recommend where people to go on, on city breaks? Apart from Madrid, I would say fly into Lisbon. What a cool city. Just a great vibe about it. Relatively cheap. Good hotels, safe, food wise. Oh my God. There's like there's food markets. Um, you get the tram around the city. Uh, you're by the sea. That was it's, called. it's awesome, right? And then Por- uh, Porto, or as they say in Spain, Spanish to say a Porto. Um, it, 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 it's just like I, I went for uh, it's, 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 it's a romantic getaway. It's, 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 I would say Lisbon be more a boys' getaway, and then you know, the romance would be in, in a Porto. Um, uh, so can I can I ask you a quick so like literally this is going to be a quick 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 fire um, <laughs> quick fire round I'm just going to ask you your fate like you've, you've given me the names right favourite hotel so I'm just going to ask you five questions and you just give me a quick name the hotel and quick word about each one we'll start off with your, your favourite hotel my favourite hotel on, on all aspects was would be the High Rue Sea London uh, Churchill um, just off um, uh, in Portman Square um, just just an amazing it, 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 it's a welcoming hotel it, it personifies London uh, I spent many years working in London so it's, for me it just between the afternoon tea to the to having your gin and tonic in the Churchill bar to the welcoming experience the level of service um, it's just amazing Okay and outside of Europe Outside of Europe, I put the Grand High at Hong Kong because I, I think it was, I went there in 2002. We, we went from to Hong Kong and then to Bali. Um, and um, Bali, I didn't talk about Bali. Bali is like, is, is amazing also. Um, but um, I loved, I, the biggest impression was made was being shot up to the 28th floor, being given a suite, an upgrade, um, and looking out at the Hong Kong Harbour. Uh, with a bottle of Moe Chandon, you know, strawberries dipped in white chocolate, which seems classic. But for me, I was, what age was I? I was 27. And I was just new to the whole travel industry and working for high. And I was like, wow, I love this company. I love travel. There's some, you know, and it made the biggest impression. And again, I was sucked in by the whole, the view and the luxury of it all. So. And next, City Break Hotel. Yeah, I put I put the Andas um, uh, in, 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 I thought it's a very cool hotel in Fifth Avenue in New York. Uh, when it opened up, we did a lot of sort of fam trips with, you know, with, with B2B clients and, and corporate clients and meetings and stuff. We need to put it on the map. Uh, cool rooftop, um, bar, etc. view, Bryant Park. Um, very sort of Bryant Park is the cool place to be in New York um, and it's all happening there and good cafe and terrace areas etc okay resort hotel resort hotel um, yeah to, to Christ I've been to a few uh, I put the Hyatt Ziva in Cancun because I think it just and that was my first time doing that whole American resort thing where you'd have the the, the foam bath party go woo woo <laughs> you know all that crap going on in the pool and they're drinking and you know some other shenanigans going on which i can't say on on, <laughs> on, on live radio um so so you know that 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 was going on and then you had the one star michelin and then you had the the, the cool balinese beds on the beach uh and then you had the um the the snorkeling and the diving courses going on in another pool and then you had an infinity pool where you know you get served in a bar and an affinity pool. So I had the whole resort thing and I thought, this is an American resort and it's good. To, and, and it was a cool experience. Yeah. So next, the most luxurious hotel you've stayed in? Uh, what did I, probably, 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 God, I mean, I was lucky with, 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 with Hyatt uh, to stay in a few, but I put the Maldives. I probably put the Conrad Maldives. I, you didn't I, I mean, actually. Do you, want, what, do you want me to tell you? What did you, I say? You said the Park Hyatt Paris. Oh, in Vendôme. Vendôme. Yeah, it's just 
ridiculous. It's opulent at the highest level. I mean, for me, it was like the, the Maldives was it was the high end, but the but the Park Hyatt Vendôme, it's again, it's a thousand euros a night. That's beside the, the Ritz in Paris again, it's Plage Vendôme. Uh, beautiful. It has its own its original scent. It has it's a two star Michelin restaurant. I mean, for breakfast there, you know, it's not a chill out breakfast area. It's very very formal. It's it's the high end of Paris, high end of international travelers. It's the discerning guest. Uh, it's just ridiculous. The room. It's just like the most luxurious room um, with 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 best high end amenities to walk in showers to jacuzzi to. It's just ridiculous. Everything is gold taps. And uh, it, again, it, it was the for sort of flagship of luxury of Hyatt within within uh, Europe, yeah. you know. Uh, and and it was and, and and it's not it's one it wasn't my favorite experience. It, it was I something know, it that was I, just, I, I just have to say what is it was yeah. high end. Actually, luxury. That leads me on to another one. Um, the most luxurious meal in a restaurant abroad. Uh, three star Michelin. Um, Park Hyatt, New York, uh, just opened up and they have, a, I think it was a two star, three star, uh, Michelin. And that was extreme in the sense of not of what you're seeing in the menu, but you're seeing of the presentation and how sort of, did you enjoy uh, it? I didn't because, and I'm not saying I'm a bacon and cabbage, typical sort of Irish guy, mm. which is probably my favorite meal in the world that my mother, God love her, uh, used to prepare for me. But, um, I didn't because it was, it was just, it was too formal. It, you know, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, we were looking at a plate. It was a hologram of, 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 of the dish. And then we were seeing it on a, on a virtual 4d basis around us. And then we were served it. Wow. So you're probably starving while you're looking. At yeah. That. And, 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 you know, you, the, I listen, I, I had, uh, really good conversation with, with one of our American virtuoso clients, you know, which is the top end uh, luxury agent in or luxury agent group in, in the US. But they, um, yeah, I just talked about my way through it, but it's not that I, I enjoyed it. But yeah, it was at the Park Hyatt, at the Park Hyatt, New York, which is again, is another $1,200 so a night. On, on the other side of the coin, is there some meal like in a hut or in a regular restaurant that stands out in your head then the exact opposite. Every time so. I go home, every time I go home, whether it's Ennis or Killarney, more Killarney now because my dad lives in Killarney after, you know, you retired from the guards and stuff. We he moved and my mother passed away. So then he sort of moved down to Killarney. So that's where, that's where the family home is now. But yeah, every time I go, um, you know, there's a few joint uh, sort of haunts that we would go to, but always on the menu of the day would be bacon and cabbage. And I would ask for bacon and cabbage. Would I would have it. Yeah, I would have it about three times during the week. I'd be at home. Uh, and I go for the Irish stews and, you know, I would go for the old dishes that, you know, that we would, we would, were lucky enough to be, to be well looked after at home, you know, by, by, yeah. you know, uh, and I would go for home cooked food. Um, now I wouldn't be, uh, um, um, you know, now just one last hotel to mention, right. And I, and again, I'll stop one of the, the the other types of experience and 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 uh, would be um, a hotel like uh, the Hotel Europa in Killarney, which has an spa and that is one of the best probably best spas I've ever visited in the world. Oh, really? Yeah, I amazing. There. I mean, it's just out of this world the spa concept, uh, and it's outside Killarney. It's the Hotel Europa, and another one is Glen Eagles, uh, open Scotland, which has w w numerous awards as part of. Uh, the NS Moore collection now, uh, but the 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 managing director is ex Hyatt. I worked with him in London, um, uh, Connor O'Leary, uh, Irish descent as well. But um, Connor, uh, I went there for what was it, about three years ago. I went there for a weekend. Amazing Glen Eagles, you know. It's the the apart from the golfing experience, which mine is never that good. Um, but uh, it's just the 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 whole level of service and the environment you are. Uh, your your winning is just second to none. So that's that's my type of holiday, you know, where I'm looking for an experience of any, anywhere you go. But I love the countryside as well, you know, and especially being in southern Spain, which is hot and arid, and you know, um, nice coastline, but interior is 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 very dry. Um, uh, I love going to back to the countryside and maybe to my roots. Perfect. Well, we have covered some ground here, so there's just one last question that I ask everybody that I want to ask you. And it's, if you close your eyes and take four deep breaths, allow yourself to think of your happy place from your travels. 
where would that be and why? Uh, happy place for me. I've had a lot. Uh, probably is the one that, I, again, I mentioned again, is the biggest impact to me is the Maldives. Um, closing my eyes, probably lying out on a late afternoon on a sun deck on relatively private beach, looking out onto the onto the water, uh, hearing the, the, the palm trees rustle behind you. Absolute quietness. You're at peace of mind. You're at peace with yourself. You're at, you know, you're enjoying one of the most natural wonders of the world. Uh, and, you know, 10 steps away, you're, you're, you're in the Atlantis of your imagination of, you know, of, of tropical fish and, you know, manta rays and bloody sharks, which scared the hell out of me. But, but you know, uh, that's the place where, the, where when I get stressed out or if I want to imagine a place. And here's here's just a little bit of an insight into my imagination. When I like somewhere, I, I get scared if I feel I can never visit or experience that place again. So I, I never take, I always say to my wife, Maria, we're not taking Maldives off. She said, let's go somewhere different. I said, right, we're not taking it off the, off the table. It's somewhere we will go back to, but maybe not in the next few years because we've done it twice over the last three. But, but there's more places to, to visit. But I always get scared if I can feel that I, you're sitting on the lakes of Killarney, um, you know, um, in the Castle Hotel. Um, so, so, you know, that you feel that you can never go back to. That's the scary thing about tra- travel because you close your eyes, you think, I'm never going to see this place again, you know? There you That's go. a lovely idea. So I, I thank you so much, Brendan. Your, your love of your job and your love of travel is really shone true. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fergal. And thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I would ask if you could please subscribe to Apple Podcast so a new episode will appear in your library every week. I would also really appreciate if you could leave a rating and a review as it helps others to discover this podcast. To find out who's on every Tuesday, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Travel Tales with Fergal. Stay safe and keep dreaming of future travels. Travel Tales with Fergal. 